for the gigantic size of our defense budget, we don't seem to be very good at producing what's needed. We're out of ammunition to send Ukraine. And I also would add that Bibi Netanyahu should really pay attention to what's happening with Zelensky. The United States just doesn't have the military productive capability to back him up. I'm glad he, the Congress hasn't approved it. I'm not sure that all of them have the most elevated reasons for not approving it. They really want to improve border security. So they're saying we're not going to do this unless we get that. Some of them are being more clear, like Senator Tommy Tuberville saying, you know, Biden and others have said, well, if we don't stop Russia here, then we'll be sending boots on the ground to fight them in Europe. And I should add, of course, Biden has gotten around this by getting a hold of $200 million, which he's able to draw down without going through the Congress. So he is getting a little trickle of funding to Ukraine. I mean, this is stupid. And Senator Tuberville actually said, uh, while this may be a good way to raise money, it's really not very compelling. I mean, I think people know that Russia, for all of their alleged designs on Europe has not even taken Kiev. They don't even appear to be interested in taking all of Ukraine. I think they want the objectives that they stated, which is demilitarization, denazification. Ukraine has to be neutral, not join NATO, not have nuclear weapons. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm glad that some people in the Senate are at least in reality as far as that goes. I wish, however, they would be more principled and demand that we change our policy altogether and stop spending all this money on war and do something uh, that's better for the American people and the people of the world. But it really is horrific. I mean, they are just losing enormous amounts of life. They are sending women and elderly people and children and we don't seem to mind sacrificing large numbers of Ukrainians to, quote unquote, weaken and destroy Russia. In fact, previously, Senator Lindsey Graham, who now doesn't want to send more aid, said that Ukraine was a great investment. It's relatively cheap to kill Russians. Really sick. I also have to say, for the gigantic size of our defense budget, we don't seem to be very good at producing what's needed. We're out of ammunition to send Ukraine, that's why we started sending cluster bombs, which is unbelievable, a, a war crime, I would say, uh, because Biden said we don't have enough 155 millimeter shells. The whole thing is sort of a farce. And I also would add that Bibi Netanyahu should really pay attention to what's happening with Zelensky, because if Netanyahu believes the U.S. has his back and he can act with impunity, if he gets into a wider war and morality doesn't seem to matter. The fact that uh, Bibi Netanyahu has now just started flooding tunnels with salt water, which could destroy what little is left of the drinking water supply in Gaza, not to mention killing even the hostages that we claim to care so much about. He will be left hanging just as Zelensky is going to be left hanging now, or something catastrophic like a nuclear bomb or biochemical perhaps something like that. I think the situation is quite dangerous, actually, on account of the delusional arrogance of the Biden administration. If Hezbollah gets involved, if Iran gets involved, if Russia gets involved, the United States just doesn't have the military productive capability to back him up. That's a longer story, which began about 60 years ago when President Kennedy was assassinated in 1963. The U.S. underwent a horrific shift. Uh, there was something called the Congress for Cultural Freedom, a whole cultural warfare project involving the CIA and the Tavistock Institute in London. And part of what they introduced was something called the post industrial economy, the idea that somehow you could be an economy by just being consumers, which puts people in a horrible mindset, first of all, because there's no need for creativity or just sitting there waiting for everything good to be delivered to your doorstep. 
and it meant a takedown of our industrial capability, and it meant a destruction of the workforce. I've heard story of uh, like Boeing, I think, had a facility in Kansas. They couldn't even find Americans with the skills to work there. There was an upstate, uh, maybe it was either Connecticut or upstate New York highway project, and not enough of the applicants could pass a drug test to be employed there. So we would have to do a real crash program to rebuild our industrial base. We would have to, first of all, have a national mission, a purpose for the good, which would inspire young people and and cause them to want to develop their skills as engineers or scientists or to work hard and laboring uh, to get certain things done. Uh, We don't have that sense of national purpose. We are a very destructive nation right now, and I think it frankly, makes people very depressed. And if they are depressed, then they're more inclined to take drugs, die of drug overdose, commit suicide, and uh, certainly not work very hard. Well, I don't think Biden is very interested in solving domestic issues in the United States. There's been no indication of that so far. Our infrastructure is crumbling. In the state where I live, New York, I just learned that of the top 10 cities for child poverty, the state of New York has three of them, uh, Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse. The city of Syracuse has a child poverty rate of 48%. Now, Biden has been in there for three years or two and a half years already, three years and has not addressed these matters really at all. So if they don't fund Ukraine, maybe they'll send it all to Israel. Maybe they'll come up with some other boondoggle, but I seriously doubt it's going to do anything to help the American people. Americans are very overwhelmingly against spending all this money on war. That was one of the reasons people really liked Donald Trump, because he said we shouldn't have a war with Russia. We shouldn't have a war with China. Now, unfortunately, Trump tends to be very much in this Christian Zionist faction. So his policy toward Israel and Hamas and Palestine, et cetera, is very one-sided and not conducive to peace. That's unfortunate. But the American people really reject this. And I can tell you from my own organizing in the street, I was at Columbia University yesterday, people were very distraught. They said, you know, we don't have a presidential candidate. We hate Biden, but Trump, Kennedy, they both are supporting Israel's slaughter of innocents in Gaza, and we don't know where to turn. And of course, I said, well, that's why my I'm running for U.S. Senate from New York. I don't have the resources at the moment to run a presidential campaign but I am making my campaign national. And I just started actually setting up support committees in, I'm working toward 50 states. We have 20 states so far to put a spotlight on the New York Senate race as a way for the American people to make their voice heard that they don't want war, they don't wanna keep funding it. We could completely retool all these military corporations to do things that are productive and necessary, and people could still get paid for it, and we'd be a lot better off. Mm